Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode, we'll be starting out with a really cool puzzle. The name of this puzzle is Kakuro, and it is a very different puzzle from what you've been used to seeing. So, Kakuro is a really interesting puzzle consisting of rows and columns, kind of like a crossword. And you're partially right. Kakuro is a kind of logic puzzle that's often referred to as a mathematical transliteration of the crossword. So, in Kakuro, the objective of the puzzle is to insert a digit from 1 to 9, inclusive into each white cell, such that the sum of the numbers in each entry matches the clue associated with it, and that no digit is duplicated in any entry. So, therefore, there is no duplication between rows and columns, in rows or in columns, and you can fill in numbers to get sums. So, 9 plus 7 gives you 16, 9 plus 8 plus 6 gives you 23, along the row and along the column, respectively. So, what we do is we fill all empty squares using the numbers 1 to 9. So, the sum of each horizontal block equals the clue on its left, and the sum of each vertical block equals the clue on its top. So 9 plus 8 plus 6, the vertical block gives you 23. 9 plus 7, the horizontal block gives you 16. So that is how you solve the Kakuro puzzle. It's about addition of terms from 1 to 9 in order to get your particular sum. So, there are many basic rules that you should keep in mind when you're solving a Kakuro puzzle. So, here are some of these rules. There will be pre-filled cells on every board that already have numbers in them. These numbers are called clues. So, exa for example, in this board, 6, 8, 14, 1, 9, etc. These numbers that are already inside the yellow squares, they are the clues. So these are the clues, the pre-filled cells on every game board. The game board will probably have pre-filled numbers or clues that are over 9, but the player cannot use anything over 9. So you have 14 in this vertical block, but you must use numbers from 1 to 9. You cannot go use anything below 1 or above 9. We cannot use zero in this game, so keep that in mind. We cannot use zero. We can only use numbers from one to nine. So, moving on to some other basic rules of Kakuro while we're in the midst of solving it. Some of these shaded boxes have diagonal lines across the middle to create two triangles. Like for this block, here you can see you have 19 on the top and 16 on the bottom and there's a diagonal line dividing this square into two. So it creates two triangles. A clue will appear in the top right triangle and that clue, which is above the diagonal line, is a horizontal clue. It, the, the number 19 is a clue for this horizontal block. And the other clue, the clue that's present below the vertical line is in the bottom left triangle and vertical clues always appear in the bottom left triangle. So in this vertical block, the sum must be 16. So that is how you can solve Kakuro puzzles. So you look out for these clues and check out which, of, which blocks they belong to and then find out the particular combinatorics behind it, the sum. Some of these bisected boxes will have a clue in the top and bottom boxes. This means that the box is a part of a horizontal and a vertical run simultaneously. So over here, you have a horizontal block as well as a vertical block. So the bottom triangle represents vertical and the top, the bottom, the upper right triangle represents the horizontal block. Now, Let's look at some examples. For example, if a clue is 6, that means the sum that we need to get is 6, and we need to input two numbers, we cannot use 3 plus 3 because we cannot repeat numbers in a horizontal or vertical block. So since there is a repeat of number 3 in the same run, we can't use 3 plus 3 to get 6. 
we can only repeat the same number in the same row or column as long as there is one clue or shaded box in between them. So therefore, if you're looking at a vertical block or a horizontal block, you cannot repeat numbers. But for rows and columns, it is possible if there is a clue in between the row or column. Now, for example, say the provided clue is six and we have three empty boxes on a horizontal cluster. We would use the following combination since all of them add up to six. One, two, three, one, three, two, two, three, one, two, one, three, three, one, two, or three, two, one. So if you, if you know the basic numbers, you can arrange them in whatever ways you want. There is no problem in arranging as long as they are not repeating in the same horizontal or vertical blocks. For example, we have a horizontal row with three blank boxes and the clue is 22. And the first blank box is also a part of a vertical row of two blank boxes with a clue of six. The first box in the horizontal row must also match up with that vertical row to equal a sum of six. So if you have a cell which is overriding two blocks, one horizontal and one vertical, then the number which we add must satisfy both blocks. So therefore, we have to be really careful in those cases. So, now that you know the basic rules of Kakuro, let's look at some tips that we can use to solve a Kakuro puzzle very easily. The very first tip is to name the cells. How do you name them? It's similar to how we name cells on Excel. Name the columns as A, B, C, D, etc and name the rows as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. And each cell will now have a name with a combination of column and row, such as this one, which is A1. This cell is now B2. This cell is D3. This cell is E4. And F4 is this cell. So E5 is right here. This is E4. This is F4. So Using that naming system which we use in Excel, we can use the same idea and name columns and rows in order to name your cells. Naming your cells is one important way and it's a very important tip to solve a Kakuro puzzle because it allows you to look at a particular cell. Now, other important clues, I mean, other important tip includes identifying the clues. So when you're identifying clues, check and look out for clues which only require one solution and start filling out those cells. Some of these clues will always require the same number combination. So for some clues, you, you will always have to write, for four, you'll always have to write one plus three. You can't write two plus two. So it can be one, three or three, one, but again, the sum will always give you four. So some of these clues always require the same number combination. Since they are always the same, it's good to memorize some of these. Which Now this memorization gives an edge for you when you're solving puzzles. It makes these puzzles a lot easier. So these are called Kakuro magic blocks and here's some of them. So if you need a sum of 3 in 2 blocks, you can use 1 plus 3. If you want 16 in 2 blocks, you can use 7 plus 9 always. If you want 23 in 3 blocks, you can always use 6 plus 8 plus 9, and so on. And you can always start try and make your own, and these are the general Kokoro magic blocks in existence. Now, another important tip to solve a Kokoro puzzle. Compare the restrictions for the crossing rows and columns to make further deductions. So for that, you have to use a pencil to lightly write in the possible values for each clue in the blank boxes. So for example, here, just write these, you know, write values lightly if you have multiple options. And then after solving other rows and columns, you'll eventually get to a stage where you can eliminate some of these options in order to get to the right one. If a specific number has already been used in a row or column, it cannot be used again in that same row or column. Then we can erase those numbers for potential combinations. And 
one of the most important tips for solving a Kakuro puzzle? Look for boxes that only have one option left. So suppose for 27 you have filled in all the other values but only 3 was remaining. So this is a potential hotspot because then you can complete the box easily. So always look out for these kinds of patterns. So these are our tips to solve a Kakuro puzzle very easily. For the benefit of our viewers, today we'll be solving a very simple example of a Kakuro puzzle. So in this Kakuro puzzle, you can see that you have rows, columns, and some values are already filled in. So this makes it extremely simple. We'll be using more typical puzzles in our future episodes. So don't forget to stick, a, stick around for those. So in a puzzle like this, the first thing that you need to do is to name the cells. So what you do is you name the rows and columns. So row A, I mean column A, column B, column C, column D, and column E. And over here, you have row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, and row 5. It's a pretty short one, and you can easily solve this. So let's look at the cell A1. So in A1, you have a blank here, and this blank plus 3 gives you a sum of 12 in the horizontal block, while at the same time, the blank plus 6 will in the vertical block will give you a sum of 15. So now it's quite simple. You just subtract 3 from 12, and 12 minus 3 gives you 9. And if you put 9 plus 6, then that is equal to 15. So the number 9 is the correct entry. So these are the cases where only one option fills. So these are the cases where you should look out first. If you look at the cell E1, so in E1, you have another blank, and this blank plus 7 gives you 10. The blank plus 1 gives you 4. So 10 minus 7 is equal to 3. 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. So 3 must be the answer. Some of you may think, how would 3 be the answer? Because there's already 3 in the cell B1. Y yes, that is true. But if you notice, you have clues at the cell C1. So since the cell C1 is separating this row into two horizontal breaks, you can add the same number to a row or column. So provided that there's a clue in the middle, you can add three two times to this same row, that is row 1. So on that note, let's look at the cell A5. So in A5, if you look at if you look at it horizontally and vertically, you need to get a value of 16 by adding the blank with 7. So 9 plus 7 is the only option to give you 16 in this case. So therefore, 16 minus 7, that is 9, will be the correct entry for cell A5. If you look at the cell E5, you have the scenario where the blank plus 9 gives you 13 and the blank plus 7 gives you 11. So 13 minus 4 and 11, mi 11 minus 7. So if you take 13 minus 9, that gives you 4. If you take 11 minus 7, that gives you 4. So therefore, the right option, I mean the right entry to this cell that is E5 is the digit 4. So these were the simplest blocks to fill in this puzzle. Now let's look at something a little bit more complicated. But then, this puzzle is very simple, so complicated is having a very small degree of complication. Now if you look at our row 3. Now row 3 only needs one digit in order to complete it. So if you look at this horizontal block, 6 plus blank plus 9 gives you 23. So you have 9 plus 6 giving you 15 and you need to just subtract 15 from 23 in order to get your answer. So that's simple. So you cut it 1, you get 13. 13 minus 5 is 8. 1 minus 1 is 0. 
So the only option that fills in here is is the digit 8. So the digit 8 plus 6 plus 9 gives you the value of 23 horizontally. Now, if you have remembered, one of the Kakura magic blocks was for 23 with 3 blocks. So at that time, it was said that 6 plus 8 plus 9 gives you 23. So, similarly, if you look at the column C, the, the vertical block, which on addition gives you the sum 12, can also be easily filled by adding just one more element. So 8 plus 1 gives you 9, 12 minus 9 is 3. So putting 3 there will give you the correct answer. So now how do we solve this puzzle? Now let's look at the column B. In column B, you have the particular scenario of a complete row which needs to be filled. So you need two more terms in order to get the sum of 19. So 19 is the sum for this vertical block. So the given elements are 3, 6, and 7. So 3 plus 6 gives you 9, plus 7 gives you 16. So that means 19 minus 16 will be equal to 3. And the magic block for 3 is always 1 plus 2 if you want to fill it in 2 blocks. So, now you need to get a sum of 3 in order to make the total sum as 19. So you need to put 1 and 2. So how do you put that? If you notice, row 2 already has a 1. So putting a 1 here would result in repetition. So that is not possible. It is illegal. So therefore you should put 2 here and one will go over the cell B4. So that is how you can use the row and column mismatch in order to find out effective values. So now you can look at row two. Row two is having the sum of 19 across this horizontal block. Seven plus one gives you eight. Eight plus six gives you 14. 14 plus 2 gives you 16. 19 minus 16 is 3, so you can put the value of 3 here. That completes row 2. And the final piece that you need to complete that is but that is the cell D4 can either can be completed by either using row 4 and finding the sum and the difference or using the column D and finding the difference. So let's use a column here because you've already done a row. So you have 26 as the total sum. 9 plus 7 gives you 16. 16 plus 3 gives you 19. 19 plus 1 gives you 20. So 26 minus 20 gives you 6. So you need to just put a 6 there in order to complete the entire Kakuro puzzle. So, if you've done that using row 4, you would have got the same result as well. So, again, the same thing. That's why we kind of say that this puzzle was easy because it's short and it also has pre-filled values. So, in further puzzles, we'll be looking at how to tackle puzzles which are comparatively harder than the one given to you. So, let's look at the answers. The cell A1 is 9. The cell A5 is 3. The cell B2 is 2. The cell D2 is 3. The cell C3 is filled with 8. The cell B4 is filled with 1. The cell C4 is filled with 3. The cell D4 is filled with 6. A5 is filled with 9. And E5 is filled with the value 4. So, now that we have verified our answer, it is safe to say that our method is an exclusive method by which you can use to solve any Kakuro puzzle of any kind of complexity. So using our basic rules and the general rules of Kakuro, you can solve the, any kind of puzzle on any newspaper or any other source wherever you find a Kakuro puzzle. 
So that's all from us in this episode. If you want to stay tuned and get more of our Kakuro puzzles, then do not forget to subscribe to our channel. The name of our channel is Brain Blitz Audios. We have a lot of educational content. You can always check out our homepage in order to learn more. So, until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, keep practicing Kakuro puzzles, and bye bye for now.